Thanks, Abi. Yeah, and Karan, welcome to Dev Nation Day. Uh, so I've heard that you're playing with some auto, auto, uh, uh, automation and smart cities. Mm -hmm. And so how does it work? Lots of automation you guys are gonna see, lots of tools, lots of, I can already see on the, on the chat, people are excited. So so yes, I'm gonna show you guys a tech soup that I'm calling it. So so bear with me. <laughs> yeah, please, yeah, show us. Uh, yeah. The stage is yours. Okay, thanks, Edson. I'm gonna share my screen and give me a, a hands up once you see this, sharing screen number three. So what do you see? <laughs> Do you see my my Preso presentation? Or is it a different screen? I do, yeah. yeah we're okay, seeing fantastic. Screen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, fantastic. So uh, so hey guys, I'm Karan and uh, uh, today I'm gonna show you. Uh, so all, all the previous experts uh, uh, on this, on the keynote session showed you how you can seamlessly and in the simple way deploy your apps, your 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 doc, doc scanner or doc detection apps, cat detection apps uh, and Pac-Man game shows. Today I'm gonna to show you how you can, you know, move these move these apps onto the edge, right? Because we have we have you know billions of people to to go to, right? So I'm gonna show you how you can deploy seamlessly deploy for uh, uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes and and move to edge and definitely you know get the data from the edge to the core, do some machine learning solution designing on top of OpenShift. So. So uh, we'll start with some uh, as a as a standard software development practice. What's the business requirement, right? So let's start with the business use case, a business requirement. We need to build an app, which or a solution. Uh, it's not a single app; it's it's a collection of apps. We need to build a tech stack that should uh, you know help us reduce some congestion, and we need to charge vehicles some kind of fee as they drive into a city area. So we have chosen an area in, in London called as a ultra low emission zone in which, you know, uh, uh, there is a special charge that the, that the vehicle needs to pay because the, the authorities wants to uh, protect or the uh, because of environmental reasons, they want, you know, not all vehicles should just enter into the city. So yeah, reduce some congestion, reduce some pollution, charge some some dirty vehicle feces. If the vehicle does not meet, uh, uh, meets emission standards, we want to apply more charges so that the, the owner will not enter the city, uh, you know, very frequently. And maybe a third use case would be, hey, I want to lock, locate a wanted vehicle, right? So uh, which the 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 officials can can use the system for. So that's the business, very, very high level business requirement. And we're going to walk together on this uh, and touch upon how we can capture all these things. So that's the text I was talking about. I'm gonna show you lots of tech, lots of lots of tools, open source and and Red Hat tools and 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 you know lots of tool and each of them have their specific reason why they why they exist on this solution, right? We don't want to over engineer, but yeah, there are there is a special place for Kafka, for Ceph, so for Superset, for for Grafana, right? Uh, for databases, uh, obviously Kubernetes is the heart, the the, the beating heart for for all the all the solution. Uh, Ansible is going to be the the magic. Through which we're gonna we're gonna you know create some some tech soup uh, on this. Um, so yes, before we go into the Morse presentation mode, I'm gonna go and and show you. Let's deploy. Let's deploy this thing right now, and let's use Ansible to do it for us. And while Ansible will do the heavy lifting in the background, I'm gonna take you over to the to a few more journey like what I'm doing uh, what I'm doing in this in this actual implementation. Meanwhile, the system will 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 be on its toes. So what you guys are seeing here is uh, I have my terminal opened up here. Uh, I've already logged in to my OpenShift uh, uh, CLI. Uh, on the on the other side, we have OpenShift console through which we're gonna see you know um, how things operate. So step one, there is nothing on the system right now. It's it's a vanilla. Uh, it's a, it's yeah, not vanilla, yeah, but it's a uh, it's it's an empty OpenShift cluster, and that's the first workload, and the smart city workload we wanna deploy on this cluster. So starting with Starting the basics, create a new project, right? New project, uh, OC, new project called a smart city. You want to run this? Okay, we are into the project and, and the CLI is, is smart. It have already added me to the project. Next, I'm going to run an Ansible playbook, 
which I'm going to explain you in a few in a few slides. So bear with me. This is gonna do a lot of things in the background. This this process will take close to 15, 10 to 15 minutes. Meanwhile, we'll go and explore how the how the overall solution looks like. So we're gonna run Ansible. So those of you who are familiar with Ansible, Ansible Playbook is the command to do it. Uh, I'm gonna run it from local because you know uh, I, have, I have the connection established on my local machine. Uh, um, and then uh, this is the this is the main master playbook we're gonna run against. So I'm gonna hit this. And uh, meanwhile, this is running. Uh, let me pull up my my project, Smart City. The project is here, and just go to my my favorite section workloads and parts so we're gonna see lots of stuff coming up right so coming back to my deck back in the presentation mode system will take some time to to set up uh let's understand let's understand meanwhile what is happening under the covers so from the solution design point of view Okay, we have we have this uh, city of London ultra low emission zone. We have all these cameras installed across various toll locations in, in across the city. And the use case is that each toll location that we're calling as a, as as an edge, right? Each edge location will recognize the the vehicle, the passing vehicle, and detect its license plate. And through some uh, through machine learning models, we gonna we gonna grab the string that the model detects in in real time uh, uh, from all these edge locations and attempt and and append some metadata to it. Like okay, you know uh, uh, what is the timestamp through which uh, 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 this image was captured? What is the geo lat long? So that we can do all sorts of amazing stuff once we have a lot of data into the system. Okay, but the data is being generated at the edge, and there are multiple edge locations here how we can move the data to the central data center to the central uh, 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 system where we can do lots of you know compute and analytics do some some fee calculation on the data that we have collected apply some more business logic like hey apply some dirty vehicle dirty dirty charges to the to the vehicle and notify notify the officials in case uh, uh, if the if the system find finds out uh, a lost vehicle right so remember our use case that i was explaining before so that's the very high level uh, um, design part 1 in part two, great. We are we are we are live capturing data across from all the edge locations onto the central core location. We have done you know some business analytics in there, but but wait a minute. We are capturing a lot of data. What should we do with this data? Well, we should retain the model because obviously uh, machine learning uh, uh, the model has to be uh, has to be updated as we learn about the data, as we collect more data, right? So we need to store vehicle images, license plate images, and, and license plate strings into, into the system, right? And then retrain the model. We have a model already deployed on the edge, retrain the model, improve its prediction accuracy, and then deploy the same model or the new version of the model across to multiple edge locations. So OpenShift helps to help to do that, and, and tools on the, on top of OpenShift helps you to 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 build a solution like this where you have multiple uh, few hundreds to thousands of edge locations. Uh, you know, you just need a system that can that can uh, that provides you the right tool to do this kind of stuff. So that's part two of the solution design, right? Deploying the model at the edge. Let's come back and understand uh, how these things work. Right, so this is more kind of a you know thousand foot view of the system. We have multiple edge locations uh, uh, running OpenShift environment. Uh, it could be uh, it could be fat edge where there could be a three node OpenShift cluster, or maybe maybe a, a very very thin location where they just need a single node, uh, a single node OpenShift. Right, that's that's really a thing thing right now. So. Uh, um, so as the video streams produce images, live images from from the system, uh, uh, the system the images will, will go into a license plate recognition model. This model will then extract out uh, uh, the the areas of the image where it detects uh, a potential uh, license plate, and then it will basically give this uh, this uh, you know uh, subset of the image to an OCR model, optical character recognition model, which will read the letters from the number plate. Right, it's pretty standard. And then once we have fancy of data onto the edge, we will what we'll use we'll use Kafka. Kafka is the is the go-to technology to to handle this kind of workload. So we'll use Kafka Kafka producer, and then Kafka producer will will produce uh, some messages onto the local Kafka cluster running on the edge. But now here's the magic. 
we have lots of edge locations and we need to move the data. We need to build this uh, loosely coupled system that should handle the network disruptions, right? So Kafka does it pretty well for us. Uh, uh, all the events, all the, all the metadata uh, will be stored on the local Kafka edge clusters. And then it will asynchronously, it will move the data from edge to core using a technology or using a feature called as Kafka Mirror Maker, which will move the data from and from one edge or maybe thousands of edge locations onto the core central data uh, data point, which is Kafka again. So we are we are capturing the data onto the central Kafka cluster, and once we have the data onto the central Kafka subsystem, fantastic! We can do lots of things with it. For example, we can build our own Kafka consumers maybe a python go or quarkus apps that can read and 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 you know tap into the kafka topic and build some business logics do some uh, wanted vehicle notifications or else for long term preserving uh, the data of kafka because remember this is all governmental data right we want to store data historically correct so we need some some persistent layer that can move data that is coming to kafka move into an object storage because object storage is 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 you know is is auto autonomous storage correct you just store it it's simple to use and it is cheap it's low cost so we'll use something called a secor which can help secor is by the way a, a kafka consumer which will tap into the kafka topic read the data from kafka store that it onto object storage bucket and here we are using ceph uh, ceph object storage which is the the choice. And next, once we have data, once we have data onto object storage, we can use we can build analytics and reporting, real time uh, uh, analytics and reporting using tools provided by Open Data Hub, like Superset, Apache Superset, Open uh, Grafana, uh, Starburst. So Starburst is a, is a very amazing technology. It can allow you to to write and build uh, distributed distributed queries across. Uh, heterogeneous data uh, uh, data data sources like you can write a SQL query that's very powerful which can go and and read data uh, from a SQL database and at the same time you can join it using data that is that is living on the object storage S3 interfaces. So this is the power of of Secor, uh, sorry uh, uh, Superset uh, that provides you. Uh, uh, to have this uh, this kind of a you know uh, uh, environment, which is a very powerful engine, and then Superset is basically the the dashboard and reporting part of it, which will you know uh, uh, show you in real time the reports. And Grafana, obviously, to manage this system, we would need you know uh, cool developers like you, as well as some some operations people who want to keep an eye eagles eagles eye on onto the dashboard, and they need some some real time dashboard. And Grafana is like the the best choice, at least in my opinion. Because I love Grafana, <laughs> so so this is the overall solution that uh, the Ansible, the Ansible automation under the covers is doing for us, right? So what Ansible is doing for us? Let's understand. It's setting up, in, installing and setting up uh, database for us. It's installing and setting up Kafka clusters because you know I, I don't have I, this is not this is a, this is a demo right now. So Ansible is doing deploying and Kafka edge cluster as well as a Kafka core cluster on the same same OpenShift environment that we have. And then Ansible gonna deploy multiple microservices. So one of them would be hey license plate recognition microservice, which includes build uh, using build config builds and then you know from from Git source. To, uh, to images and deploying that into deployment config and uh, launching the pod and creating the service and, and and exposing it through the route. So Ansible is actually doing a lot of work. Uh, similarly, uh, like LPR, uh, uh, Ansible is doing setting up microservice for events, microservices for uh, for image server, and microservice for load generator because you know I don't have a real camera hanging around and looking at the street. But yeah, so we have a load generator for, for the sake of this demo. And then setting up Secor, which will move the data into the system. So this is all microservice setup that Ansible will do for us. And then you know uh, setting up Open Data Hub, which is the collection of tools which will help us do analytics in real time. And then finally, the Grafana dashboard setup. So Ansible is really doing the, the, uh, uh, the, the heavy lifting here. While I'm speaking and talking to you right at the moment, the system is doing the job for me. And for for all the enthusiasts out there, what all modules I'm using to make make this happen? It is just these eight modules I'm using to get my my system up and running from zero to hundred. So uh, uh, there's a community model called as KHS, which basically uses OpenShift uh, uh, client Python client library. Uh, 
client tool, or I think library, uh, which it will call up. And uh, uh, it has full access to all sorts of uh, uh, OpenShift objects. So Ansible can just tap onto the KTS module and boom, you can, you can just do whatever you want. You can do with, with an OC client, right? Similarly, uh, uh, by the way, OC client does CRUD. It will do and change the objects while KTS info, another module, it will go and read out uh, 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 all basically all the get commands that you do like OC get or kubectl get. KTS info will, will do the more or less the same stuff. Uh, we are using set facts because we have to manage the state and, and dynamically update the inventories and uh, have some variables that we wanted to capture into the system. I'm, I'm running some, some commands uh, uh, because there are certain things which are still complex and I don't have a module for so I'm, I'm like super set so super set data data updations i'm using some commands for it i'm using copy modules to copy images from my from my uh, data store to uh, to s3 and then adding host to the inventory s3 sync to move the data and a pause just for for you know sake of completion like i'm pausing it just so that system can get stable so yeah look at this i mean i'm just using the eight modules to do a lot of heavy lifting using Ansible. And Ansible is a really powerful tool to do this kind of automation uh, for you. OK, let's now quickly check uh, uh, how does Ansible KTS module or Ansible uh, uh, usage will look like. You will write something like this. OK, KTS module, uh, the state is present. And uh, I need to uh, I need to do uh, multiple, I need to apply multiple YAML files. Like, OK, create a secret, create a deployment config, create a service, create a, a create a image stream, create build config. So KTS module and Ansible will make sure you are applying, uh, applying these YAML files like you do uh, in your OC create or OC apply minus F commands, right? And into the right namespace. So that's what KTS uh, uh, module will do. It's pretty simple, uh, simple to simple to use. And then KTS info is doing the other way. It's it's basically getting the data from the cube API. Okay, tell me the secret, and the name of the secret is this, and register the value in a PostgreSQL register variable, and then later on you set fa facts to to pull out secrets like database username passwords and name that you can later on use in your playbook so this is how how you will you will create uh, uh, these ansible playbooks for your for your lovely uh, pacman apps okay and all of the code is available uh, onto the git repository it's open go and look it out check out happy to happy to get some prs if you guys uh, interested uh, uh, adson will share some some links to the link uh, and Credits to my friend Chris Bloom, who is an awesome guy, uh, who helped us to uh, with a lot of Ansible automation around that you want to see. Okay, let me go and and get get back to my system. Okay, so, so the system is still doing the job. You can see that uh, uh, Ansible. I'm gonna scroll up a little bit and show you. It's not very not very you know uh, user friendly, but uh, since I'm using this in, in a in a in a very narrow window uh, but yeah look at this you know deploying databases deploying deploying kafka clusters and deploying uh, uh, kafka drop apis um, and then uh, um, all sorts of stuff that i explained to you so system is still doing the job so be with be with the system uh, let me see uh, uh, yeah so yes so i'm into all projects let me go to smart city project smart city is here and and yes, let me see if I'm getting any failures. No, there's no failure at the moment. So things are good. So uh, so yes, Ansible is so at this point, Ansible is importing some data source in, into Superset. So at this point, uh, it has done lots of setup already. Uh, we are into the 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 Superset part of the uh, part of the equation. Uh, meanwhile, while this is getting ready, I have another environment where I was pretty sure that this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, so I'm going to switch my window. It's another environment which is completely set up. So I'm not cheating here, I guess. Or you guys can let me know if I'm cheating. <laughs> so just to save time here. Um, so this is how the end result will look like. You're going to deploy lots of containers, lots of parts, lots of services. And Ansible is basically automating and taking, doing the, all, all the heavy lifting here. So this is my developer view. If you are a fan of administration view, uh, go to the right uh, projects from here, smart city. Uh, and then you will see. Uh, okay, great. I have I have lots of pods running into the system. I guess, yeah, thirty six pods. These are these are jobs. But yeah, thirty six pods up and running at the at the moment right now, which is making happen this demo. So I, I'll open my my one of my route, which is the dashboard Grafana dashboard for for uh, like you know the bird's eye view of the, of the city. So as I mentioned before, this is city of London, and all these black boxes here are 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 camera. 
and we have this uh, um, uh, generator which is generating images uh, or like simulating vehicles which are passing from from the from the station in real time we are capturing the count of the vehicle we are detecting the vehicle last known uh, known, uh, known vehicle upon the system we are detecting its license plate which is which is you know the optical character recognition and the license plate plate recognition model uh, model of the of the vehicle and who is the owner so by the way these names are 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 just made up names uh, so that yeah and here's a nice graph which can tell you it this is a rich data that we are collecting. Okay, please tell me out of the city, what are the top stations we have in the city, right? So, okay, uh, so station 1A is very popular because there are so many vehicles passing from the system. So, you know what? This is These are some business metrics and, uh, and data that you can take up. I'm going to real quick show you uh, uh, the CPU chart because I like I like this because it's a GIF and and it's pretty, <laughs> pretty awesome to see how this looks like. Okay, as I mentioned before, we have Edge. OpenShift Edge, OpenShift Core, we have Kafka and uh, inferencing happening on the edge and data flows from the edge via Mirror Maker onto the score Kafka cluster and via Secure data move to Ceph, Ceph Object Storage. And then later we use Starburst and, and PostgreSQL and, and other tools to you know, do some, some dashboarding around it, which looks like this. So this is, your, this is the view for your managers and your, your key stakeholders. This is a reporting view that they will see. Okay, uh, uh, so far we have done like 215,000 pounds of collection, toll fee collection, and 100,000 pounds of uh, you know uh, pollution fees, and 50, uh, 50 or 45,000 vehicles have passed from the city. Right? Uh, again, this is all generated data, simulated data. However, this to give you an idea that what you can do with these tools once they all work in tandem, and then we have these nice panels in, in superset, which you can use adjusted according to your business case. And you can get, you know, a uh, very precise metrics about your, about your business. Okay. You know, station, station number, uh, uh, five, two, zero, one is getting 22% of the total traffic of the city, which means we need to do something here, right? Maybe add one more lane, maybe build, build a, build a, build a super path here. Right. And then again, vehicle, uh, uh, so not very interesting, but anyways, uh, uh, what type of vehicles are more popular in the city? Okay, Nissans are popular or Audi R8 are popular. We can debate on that. Um, and some table table panels that, okay, tell me tell me my top uh, top consumers who needs to pay, you know, a lot of money to, to, the, to, the, to the government, right? Okay, so Suzanne King needs to pay like whatever, uh, 15,000 pounds. Oh, why? That's, that's a lot of money uh, to, to the government. But anyways, this is a big data and you get an idea, right? Uh, this is the view for your for your managers that they can enjoy, uh, and OpenShift and and tools and projects running on OpenShift can, can make it happen. And all 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 the all the nifty Kafka lovers here, I've seen that Kafka. Uh, I love Kafka. Kafka is great, uh, and so I'm using this Kafdrop, which is a nice, very nifty utility. Uh, it's an open source project that you can tap into. Uh, you you'll deploy it. Uh, you have the code in my in my repo. Uh, so yes, it will help you to you know check out. Check out Kafka messages in real time. No need for Kafka Cat. Instead, just plug into this. Uh, it's an open source project. Uh, when you open this LPR, and then you will hey quickly show me uh, the messages. So this is real time messages coming onto the LPR topic at the core data center, right? See this, see this URL. So when I, when I expand this, you know I'm getting events like okay timestamp and event ID and vehicle license plate and detection is successful and which one is on which station we are doing the detection, you know, those kind of data. So, uh, and I think we also, uh, we definitely have another uh, deployment of this. Let me see where we are on, on my deployment. Okay, wonderful, fantastic. So this worked, at least demo God, God is with me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so Ansible is completed. It has done, it has took like, 29 uh oh yeah 15 15 minutes it, it has taken 15 minutes to to deploy the entire setup that we have shown by the way you guys we have already gone through all these things that you want to show uh, the only thing that i'm going to show you here is uh, if i go to network and see routes there are so many routes in here odh ods is a great great piece of uh, solution i'm just using two components of odf that's why we don't have a lot of component but check out odf odf is pretty cool um and then uh, uh i want to show you just last thing my we have shown i've shown you core right i've shown you core this is core kafka cluster i just want to show you my edge kafka cluster as well so these are the cluster deployed uh, at the edge uh, the topic name is lpr license plate recognition i'm going to view messages and i'll do quick view 
Okay, so, so the point here is that we are capturing the message at the edge. Why a mirror maker? Oh, let me go two steps back. We are doing inferencing at the edge, detecting the uh, the vehicle, capturing the license plates in real time, putting that strings onto Kafka topic from the edge, moving the data to the core. And then once the data is in the core, we are doing analysis on top of the data, analysis like this, analysis like uh, like like this. So this is what I have to show you guys. Uh, coming back to my 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 deck, this Ansible, OpenShift, and and lot of the tools uh, makes 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 this happen. Okay, so uh, I think I am done with my with my prepared content. If there are any questions, I can take it up for you. Uh, I do not see any questions, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'm hanging around in the chat. If you guys have any questions for me, anything that you uh, that you believe uh, I should explain more or give you some pointers to play around, I'm happy to do it. So, Atsan, am I still live streaming? Yeah. <laughs> uh, thank you, Karan, for this amazing presentation, and I.